This is Dr. Paul Beckett from Florum, the Japanese knotweed specialists. I'm doing a presentation here on, on knotweeds, the good, the bad, and the freaking ugly or the fugly. Um, I've split it into three parts. First, the good. Um, the purpose of the presentation is to give a broad overview of some knotweed species, varieties, and uh, related plants. Um, that you might not be aware of if you're a professional or gardener interested in knotweeds. Um, I really want to show you that there are some knotweeds out there that are good. They're really quite attractive and uh, that's why they're planted in the first place. Um, and how some there are more than one um, vari variety of knotweed that, that causes problems. Uh, and then I'll finish off in part three with the fugly with some, uh, some inter more interesting plants. Um, so we'll crack on with part one, the good. This is a lovely plant called fleece flower, uh, Persicaria polymorpha, polymorpha meaning, meaning many shapes. Uh, it comes in quite a variety of, of shapes. The, the leaf length and size and shape can change. But uh, what's really, um, what gives it its name, fleece flower, are these beautiful fleecy flowers. Um, it's not very obvious on, on this one. If I go on to the next slide, you'll see there these uh, these almost like pampas grass flowers um, are really pretty and the, if there's a big bush of it you can see it from, from quite a way off and it's really quite an attractive plant. There's another one there, quite small growing in a, in a border, but uh, you can see perhaps the stem shape and the, the alternate leafing pattern that gives it a bit of a, z, a zigzag shape can make uh, people concerned that it might be Japanese knotweed because it is similar, it's related as well as Persicaria. So there's a lot of different Persicarias um, that, are, that I'm going to be showing through this slide. This is Persicaria campanulata, otherwise known as lesser knotweed, another really beautiful plant. These really showy leaves with these um, parallel veins along the along the leaf and also quite a marked midrib that's um, quite a marked feature of persicarias but these flowers are really really lovely um, campanulata means little bells and if you look here you can see that the flowers form little bells a really attractive plant and here from above you can see um, how pretty it can be um, uh, it's planted a lot in gardens, so you can come across this quite a lot. It grows taller than a lot of other persicarias, maybe around a metre tall, but not nearly as tall as Japanese knotweed. Now this plant does grow very tall. This is one of my favourites, Persicaria orientalis, otherwise known as Kiss Me Over the Garden Gate, because these flower stalks bend over from the tall plant, and if it's planted along a... a a fence or a gate then it hangs over and quite often it is planted along um, gates and, and fences in gardens and it fills the the border so um, I mean it's a really showy plant very tall like Japanese knotweed and also the leaf shape is quite similar to Japanese knotweed so that's the leaf of it so before it flowers it's got a very similar stem very similar size similar leaf shape so it's, it can be confused for Japanese knotweed but when it flowers there's no mistaking it as a uh, kiss me over the garden gate this here, another persicaria, you can see the, the marked midrib of the leaf, which uh, many persicarias have. This is bistort, red bistort, very popular garden plant because it's really beautiful when it flowers. Uh, easy way to identify it from um, Japanese knotweed is the fact that the basal part of the leaf clasps around the stalk. In fact, the, um, the Latin persicaria amplexicolis, amplexicolis means clasping around the stalk uh, and that's uh, because that's what the basic basal leaf does so before it's flowered it can look quite a bit like knotweed there you can see the marked midrib on the leaf that a lot of uh, persicarias have but when it flowers there's no mistaking it beautiful plant these spikes of uh, these lollipops of purple magenta pinky red flowers really really a delight uh, doesn't grow nearly as tall as Japanese knotweed, perhaps up to a metre, probably less, but it's, uh, it fills borders with this beautiful colour. It's really a lovely plant. Another very common garden plant 
is Persicaria microcephala, microcephala meaning little heads. Um, I don't know why it's called that actually, so if you do know, please let me know, I'd be very interested. Um, there's a huge range of uh, varieties of these, uh, these plants. They are marked by this arrow shape on the leaf and they can come in lots of different colours and shapes and sizes, but uh, that really uh, makes it quite a, a distinctive plant. Of those varieties, this, this one, red dragon knotweed, is my favourite. Beautiful dark red plant um, with a pale arrow shape on its leaf. Um, you can see here the stem shape is quite similar to Japanese knotweed. So you're not really going to mistake this for knotweed when it's mature, but when it's, when it's young and it's producing new shoots, Japanese knotweed new shoots are, are often red because they're, they're full of um, anthocyanins, which are these dark red pigments which are produced as an antioxidant to protect the, the seedling or the, uh, the young plants that are produced from, from rhizome buds. Um, but this plant uh, has got that red colour all through its life. Uh, a beautiful plant. So that's it. That's just a quick overview of some of the good knotweed uh, related species. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please like, please comment below. Um, if you do have any questions or any useful, interesting things, to add, I'd love to hear them. Um, there's a lot of information about Japanese knotweed on our website, so you can follow that link. There's also a feature for uploading your photos. So if you've got photos of interesting knotweed plants, or you're concerned that you might have Japanese knotweed, then please use that feature on the website. Uh, works very well on a smartphone as well, if you're looking at the, the website on your smartphone while you're on the hoof. Please do send it in, uh, we'd love to hear from you. So um, the next one, part two, is, is the bad. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy listening to that too. Um, thanks.